Karen from ediblewildfood.com here and today's video is about the purple loosestrife. It's a common wetland plant. It's caused a lot of strife, pardon the pun, for a lot of conservationists. But today we're going to explore the goodness of purple loosestrife. So this is a perennial semi-aquatic native plant to Asia and Europe, but it's made itself quite at home here in North America as well. Chance and I are on a very early morning walk right now to explore not just the purple loose strife, but to see what else is in this area. What is really cool, well, it's cool information, but it's actually a nightmare for our native plants, is that purple loosestrife, each plant can produce as many as 30 flowering stems. These ones here, like look at that right there. So what I see, probably about 10 to 15 on that one plant alone. And quite a few on each plant here. But each of these plants can produce up to 2.7 million seeds. Yeah, every year. That is quite impressive. And these really, really tiny seeds, Chance has decided to take uh, a break and have some grass as a snack. <laughs> but each of these seeds are spread through water, wind, wildlife, and of course, us. Although this plant has been reported to be anywhere up to six feet tall, which is about two meters, the ones in this area are more like maybe four feet tall. And the flowers, let's see if I can get one that's standing tall. Some of them are leaning over. Ah, there's a bumbler. Okay. So you can see that the flowers are attached to the stem in a very tall vertical spike. And these flowers are pinkish to purplish and they have a yellow center, which I'm going to try to focus in here. It's going to be hard. There we go. Hopefully my camera is picking that up for you. And here comes the wildlife from being in the creek and in the mud. Okay, so this particular plant right here, this definitely would be a plant that has maybe up to 30 flower heads. This is huge. Anyway, so you can see that, well, you can't really see, but these leaves actually feel somewhat hairy just very very soft actually and the leaf shape is lance shaped let's see there we go i think you can see that if not you can check out the link below and the leaves are opposite Not that I've been able to experience it myself, but apparently honey 
made from purple loosestrife. And if you watch very carefully about dead center, you'll see a honeybee come out shortly. I just don't want to get too close. There, look at that. I really would love to have that opportunity to try honey made from purple loose strife. So it's not just the honeybees that enjoy pollinating this plant, but I do see a bumbler down there somewhere. He kind of disappeared low there. I'm not going to be able to get in as I don't want to be walking through that. I'm not properly prepared for that. But it's just absolutely incredible to see that a plant that has been called invasive and noxious, it has a use and our bees love it. Apparently European garden books used to mention the purple loose strife going way back to the Middle Ages. That is kind of cool. And the question now to ask is, so there's some blue vervain right next door to the purple loosestrife. Are there any lookalikes? I'm going to stop right here and show you the one lookalike there is. And it's on my website. I'll put a link to that below. And that plant would be the marsh woundwort, or it's also called the marsh hedge nettle. So now I'm going to gather some to take home. And I'm only going to use it to have as a tea or in with other herbs to create a nice flavored tea. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being here right to the end of this video, for being a subscriber. If you liked what you saw, please give this a thumbs up. Please share in social media. If you're a subscriber, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you're new to my channel, if you can do me the kindness and consider sharing or consider subscribing and be sure to hit that notification bell for future videos. Chance and I want to thank you for watching and thank you for being here. And he wants to go home, but he's got to wait.